Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Paul Pindle, Outreach Working Group Chair of OPI Project. Paul, it's great to have you on the show. Good to be here. Glad to be able to talk about the Open Programmable Infrastructure Project and, and what we're doing there. Yeah, and I would love to know a bit about the history, the origin of the project, and also what is this project all about? Well, I'll give you a little bit of history, and then we can move into to what it is and, and who's part of the project and that sort of thing. The, the history of the project it started about two and a half years ago. So I work for F5. I'm a principal architect there. And F5, Red Hat, and IBM got together. We saw this trend with DPUs and IPUs, so data processing units or infrastructure processing units. These were coming to be a new uh, deployment area uh, that we thought was something we needed to play in. And we'd, we'd had problems in the past dealing with each of the vendors' SmartNIC solutions. So SmartNICs may have been a predecessor to DBUs, but SmartNICs, they were very difficult to deploy, very difficult to uh, transition from one vendor to the other. And our goal was to create a, a standardized framework that we could use to uh, deploy, uh, secure and run um, infrastructure and applications upon these data processing units that was multi-vendor across all of the vendors in the space. So that started about two and a half years ago. A little over a year ago, we joined the Linux Foundation as a project. So we are a Linux Foundation project. Uh, we joined in June of last year, I believe. And uh, there have been several members that have joined alongside of us. Many of the uh, many of the uh, providers of these DPUs and IPUs, and so some of those are that have joined us are ARM, Dell, uh, F5. I'm with F5, Intel, Keysight Technologies, Marvell, Nvidia, Red Hat, Tencent, and ZTE. Those are our premier members in the project. And we have several that are general members, Dream Big Semiconductor, Fujitsu, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, Solid Run, and Unifabrics. So those are the members that are part of the project at this point. As we're talking about this project, can you talk a bit about the role of DPUs in the, the modern world, modern economy, modern tech space? What, what, what role is playing and why it's critical to, to modern world? You know, a, a data processing unit is, in, in many cases, a PCI card attached to the PCIe bus that, is a, that has a full compute complex on it. So it's got compute, memory, and storage on the card itself. It has its own endpoint, its, its own network identity, um, and it's used often to offload and or isolate uh, workloads from the host that's processing uh, a work, an actual workload. So um, it's a way to offload those infrastructure workloads away from the compute and isolate them uh, so that they can... Um, so that the host can focus on processing the server workloads that it needs to process. So that's the big, uh, that, that's the, the, the two main uh, uses that people are using data processing units for. Hyperscalers deployed them, and, but they've all built their own non-standard frameworks and, and we're trying to create standard APIs. Um, and we're trying to uh, abstract that hardware so that solution providers can focus on uh, deploying services. You know, so we want to create an ease of de development and an ease of deployment of these devices. And we believe that doing so is going to drive the efficiency in large computing environments. And that's going to create uh, for the users themselves a, a TCO um, savings and then also that will mean that, that these will become more popular um, and the vendors will um, will benefit from this by those devices becoming more popular and easier to use. So we feel like it, it we're creating this flywheel effect um, where uh, by creating these standard APIs, they become easier to use because they're easier to use. People use more of them. The vendors create more of them and, and so on and so forth. So 
that's our that's the uh, one of the one of the background goals of the OPI project. So it's it's uh, going to be kind of you know uh, its own umbrella project within Linux Foundation, if I'm not wrong. It is its own uh, um, umbrella project within uh, the Linux Foundation, and and so our our goal, our stated mission, and our objective is that we want the Open Programmable Infrastructure Project to foster a community driven, standards based, open ecosystem for next generation architectures and frameworks based on DPU and IPU like technologies. You can get that same if you go read our website. That's our that's our uh, objective statement, our mission statement. When we look at Linux Foundation projects, uh, and of course, if you look at this modern world, uh, we don't live in silos anymore. And of course, when it comes to open source project, uh, we always uh, leverage each other's projects. We always kind of cross pollinate. If you look at OPI, what are the projects that you feel that you will be either be working closely or where you see, hey, you know what, the community, the problems, the ecosystem is more or less same. So we will be working closely with those the projects, those communities as well. There are several that we're working closely with. So um, we're working with the SmartNix Summit folks. We recently had an event, a half day tutorial event that was co-located with the SmartNix Summit that was held in San Jose. So that event was uh, in June of this year, and, and we, we were recently there. So they're one group. Another that we're working with and, and we've had communication with is the Dash Sonic group. So working with them. SNEA is another uh, open source project that we're uh, coordinating with. We'll be presenting. We, we have two OPI-sponsored sessions at the next SNEA SDC event, and that is coming up in... September, I believe. So, and that'll be in San Jose as well. So we'll be presenting there. And several of the vendors that are part of the OPI project will also be presenting at that conference and uh, bringing, a, bringing their OPI experience to their presentations. So those are the major ones that we've worked with. We've also uh, submitted sessions to um, Open Compute Project and we'll be looking at, at what we can do with them uh, down the road. There's There's been uh, very early discussions with LF Edge, um, another Linux Foundation project. When we look at this project, can you talk about uh, what are the things that you feel that since the inception of projects that you have achieved so far, uh, what are the milestones that you have hit? And then we'll talk about what are the things that are in the pipeline in the future. We focused um, in a couple of places. Uh, we have several different working groups and those working groups uh, that that are writing code, those working groups are in the area of provisioning and lifecycle. So lifecycle management. We've done quite a bit of work there uh, where we've standardized on SZTP as the method for uh, delivering and provisioning uh, these DPUs and IPUs um, using OPI APIs. So we've standardized there. Uh, our API and behavioral model uh, group has worked on defining the, the taxonomy and, and the schema that we're going to be using for APIs. They've also been working on several different APIs from a storage API. So DPUs, um, are a great way to uh, hand, offload storage um, management tasks from a compute onto these uh, data processing units, DPUs and IPUs. So a storage is one. Uh, an IPsec using a strong swan is another uh, solution that we've uh, another solution that we have taken uh, on on board. And we're using that for IPsec. We're working right now in the networking space and Kubernetes space on different CNIs and how we can use a DPU in a standardized fashion to uh, manage CNIs and, and the Kubernetes networking space. Uh, we've also got a, um, not so much code, but we've also got a, a use case working group. And that group is working with what we call our deployment partners. So end users of these cards, they may be tier one or tier two cloud providers at this point. That seems to be all the, the folks that are uh, able to purchase DPUs and IPUs right now. They're all being funneled to tier one and tier two cloud providers. Uh, 
So we're working with them to determine what is what are the use cases they're look, they're looking for. So those are the three major ones. We've also got a developer platform and lab group that is that's building a uh, a way to test and and work with these solutions. You talked about the founding members. Can you also talk about the the, the kind of community as you said, you know, project related and new. The, of course, you talk about the community that is there, but ideally, what kind of community you want to build? What kind of growth you want, you want, you want to see, or the growth you are seeing of the project? We are uh, actively looking for new members to join the project and and come on board with us and help define how um, define these frameworks and actually uh, write the code that that makes up these frameworks. So we are looking for new members to do that. We're looking for uh, and we have our we're reaching out to folks in the industry that we know. Um, folks that may be the first time they hear this from your, uh, from this webcast, I would love to have them reach back out to us, um, and, and find out and, and figure out how they can contribute. What kind of folk will be ideal for this project? I see three separate groups that are, um, interested in, in this project. The first are the vendors themselves, the, the vendors that are making these cards, um, you know, We've come together and, and those vendors come together and work together day by day, side by side, looking for how do we take and create a standardized framework so that, um, you know, there are there are pieces and parts of using a data processing unit that are common across all of these vendors. They all have to be deployed. They all have to, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of things that they all have to do. It makes sense to uh, pool their efforts and define that once, um, and then have each of them use those methods within their own stack um, and provide their own secret sauce on top of that. So back to your question. Yes, vendors are one of the uh, constituencies that make up this community, and we're always willing to get more of those. The other is the 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 integrators, I'll call them. So folks that take um, take a DPU and integrate it with something, maybe it's uh, Fujitsu, maybe it's HPE or Dell or, or one of the server vendors that puts those in their servers. They have a vested interest in simplifying how they deploy different data processing units, IPUs on their, in their system hardware. So they have a, and ARM is another vendor of ours, uh, another server vendor of ours. So they have a, a vested interest in making sure that that those interoperate well together and that they don't have to choose and build bespoke deployment programs for each and every vendor's card. Uh, operating system vendors, Ubuntu, Red Hat, others are, are here. And how do we... Um, how do we provide the drivers and the operating calls in the kernel that use these uh, DPU cards in a very standardized way? How do we how do we get them on board? ISVs like um, F5 networks. Uh, so how do we, as a let's say, how do we take and, and put a firewall or a web application firewall or an API gateway protection? How do we put that on a DPU? So how do we deploy it there so we can offload it from the um, from the host? So that's that's another um, and those that middle group those those integrators uh, is that middle group and the third group are the end users the deployment partners we call them they they're cloud one cloud cloud providers at this point tier one and tier two and enterprises. So how do they take these devices? and easily put them within their infrastructure. And um, let's say they run into a situation where they can't purchase any more of one vendor's cards for whatever reason, they wanna to swap to another. How do they make that transition seamlessly? Um, so those three groups, the vendors, the integrators, and the deployment partners are the three main groups that, that are part of the community and that we wish to welcome to join us in this endeavor. Can you talk about um... The software stack that you folks are building, uh, what kind of like pipeline you have, what version we have already there? One of our goals is to reuse uh, open source software that is out there um, 
and being an open source project, we want to, we don't want to reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. Um, we're, we're using a gRPC pipeline uh, mostly and um, the way things, the, the APIs and the way they interact. And like I, like I spoke of earlier, we've got several different integrations that, that we have on the truck. So we've got some provisioning work that we've done with SZTP, so secure zero touch provisioning. We've got some uh, work around IPsec and the strong swan implementation. Uh, we've got some work around storage and uh, some demos around how to um, offload storage from the host to the DPU, uh, offload storage management tasks from there. So those are, are the various different ones that we've got in the works right now. We've got a full uh, um, simulated build environment that anybody can come and, and download and, and test out the code that we have written so far. Uh, we're, we've got a a fairly good code coverage on most of those uh, repositories that we have in GitHub that are open. And um, so, yeah, that's the, that's the code that we're at right now. Um, I said next on the roadmap, we're working on networking. So those are um, some networking APIs and we're also working on some, uh, uh, so deployment, um, how to deploy a workload onto a DPU that's one of the next things that we're working on right now. Paul, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about this project, this scope and how, you know, of course folks can get involved. Thanks for all those insights and I would love to chat with you again when of course there are new updates to the project. Thank you. Thank you, Zavnel. Thanks so much for the opportunity to come and talk about OPI. <laughs>